Luke Combs, Beer Never Broke My Heart on B105, the Northland's number one for new country. It's The Breakfast Globe with Ken and Lauren. You know, today, September 11th, 23 years now. Wow. Did I do the math correctly on that? Mm-hmm. 23 years? Wow. Um, but anyway, uh, remember that, 9-11 today as we get started. And it's going to be a warm one. Um, going to be like 80, 81. Yeah, going to be a warm day. Wow. Second wave of summer. Maybe this is like our third I feel like because we already had a heat wave and then we had another one. So let's just ride the wave. Let's ride it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jelly Roll and I Am Not Okay on B105. It is a breakfast club with Ken and Lauren. Got the B105 Buzz brought to you by East Central Energy, member owned, homegrown, community focused since 1936. Can I start? Yeah, go right ahead. This is funny. So my niece is like obsessed with pine cones and every time she sees one, she'll like grab it and then she like won't let go of it like she just loves them hold your knees uh she's four okay that's a good appropriate age for that yeah no she's not like 15 (laughs) or something um no no judgment though but i'm going to tell her about this because the wisconsin dnr will actually pay you now for red and white pine cones as part of their reforestation program um so if you're interested in this or you have a lot of pine cones in your yard whatever um you can see like where you can drop them off and and all that um but good way to Help the environment. If you're out and about, you see pine cones anyways, you can get some cash. Okay, check that out. Pine cones, red and white. Well, I guess interesting looking there. Um, so this is interesting. Lake Nebagaman's Dairy Queen has been there for like 73 years. Some people say longer. They don't even really know, right? Mm-hmm. The Dairy Queen location, Lake Nebagaman, it's right next to the lake. It might be losing its franchise as That's a Dairy bad, Queen. because those, those kinds of places that have been in small communities, like they're staples like people you know are used to that there's a lot of situations where it's happened where like the corporate has uh you know for the franchise they have to follow rules and, and whatever make investments and stuff and, and you know this is just a seasonal yeah location as well which could be playing into this but they've got a um the communities come together and they're trying to raise awareness and get some memories and stories trying to change the mind of corporate and then also asking okay if this does fall through what do you what, what should we be named and why mm-hmm. you know but 73 years, you think they'd throw him a bone, right? Yeah. That's so sad. Yeah. Well, that's going to be a, like a big loss for the community. So, well, I mean, I'll still be there. It just won't be a Dairy Queen, right? Yeah, but I'm still. If you have a Dairy Queen, you don't want it to go away. Right, right. Well, you see this happen quite a bit. Like, you know, well, A and Dubs back in the day was an A and W. Now they're closed too, aren't they? I believe they I think are. They closed, yeah. Closed. Yeah. Well, the pandemic's been hard and, you know, years following and inflation and all that, but. Yeah. Anyway, read about it, and you can see the link there at uh, B105Country.com if you want to share your memories there and support them. Mm-hmm. Coming up, uh, Brantley Gilbert, Eli Young Band, and more next on B105. Morgan Wall and Cowgirls on B105. When you were in Wyoming, did you ever ride a horse? No. I rode a horse one time at, you did. at uh, Bible Camp. And looking back, this really should not have been allowed, but we rode horses like up a very steep side of a mountain. And mine was acting weird, so I jumped off. And oh I jumped God. off right in time because it was going to buck me off. And then, of course, I was a teenager, so I wanted to play it cool. And I was fine. But I had to, like, go make a statement and sign things saying I wasn't going to sue the camp. But I really just wanted to pretend like it didn't happen, you know, because there were, like, cute boys there. So, oh basically, God. I've always been embarrassing. All right, let me unpack this here a second. <laughs> First off, you went to Bible camp when you were a teenager. Was that court-ordered? Or was that just like... What? And then second time. And then all the cute boys at Isn't Bible camp. is that a camp. good thing as a teenager it to is. go to Bible camp? It is. I just don't, I just didn't see, I didn't think you'd ever been to Bible camp, you know? Have you ever asked if I've been to Bible camp? No, it's not something You're I usually just start, assuming. A, start a conversation You're just assuming with. things, Ken. I never went to Bible. I went to, I went to, when I was little, I went to Bible camp. Yeah, all my friends and I did in middle school and into high school, so. No kidding. Yeah. Well, good for you. And then I got bucked off a horse, and so thanks for bringing that up, too. So. Well, actually, I didn't bring up the whole bucked off. I just wonder if you ever ridden a horse. Oh, yeah. That was it. So, yeah, I I have, and I'm not going to do it again. Have you? No, yeah, when I was a kid, I rode one for a couple minutes. Oh. Not my thing. I don't need, I don't need to do it. There's no brakes and no throttle. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Well, well anyway, I was just cowgirls. All right, well, I've been vulnerable, so let's move on. All right, I'll be vulnerable coming up. Don't worry, something always comes up. Um, here weather forecast next on B105. <laughs> Keith Urban and Waste of Time on B105, 710 Laugh-Offs coming up. Uh, also, we've got uh, weather today going to be like around 80. That's pretty crazy. We'll take it. Chance of seeing Northern Lights again tonight, too. Ooh. I always say I want to stay up and watch them, and then I'm sleeping, and I don't want to be woken up. So. Well, if they're magnificent, you sometimes have to. Yeah. You, just, you never we'll know. See. Have you ever seen the Northern Lights? You've yeah, seen I've seen them once. Did it I tell w- you I saw a bear again the other day? No. 
You did it. I saw a bear running across the road on Highway 53 just uh, south of uh, Independence, where Highway 33 cuts off there or goes off. You Are know? there bears in Cloquet? Well, I'm sure. The bears everywhere. I just never see bear sightings in Cloquet. If somebody has, please yeah, no. call or send us a message. Cause Lauren will be on her way. I'm very sad. Like, I want to see one. It's my dream. And I, so far, just coming up, coming up empty. Okay. Well, be careful what you wish for. I'm well, on, I don't want to see one. Fa- I don't want to fight one, but I want to see one from afar. I'm going to be at Voyagers National Park this weekend, and I'm going to be uh, camping, and I will be putting food in a bear locker so they don't come after us. Love that. Well, I, don't know, I got my bear spray handy. There was case. something in my yard, and we set up the ring camera, but we it, nothing, it never appeared. <laughs> Baiting bear just to see him. Jason Aldean, Chiefs Country on B105. It is Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren, and we've got the 710 laugh off going on right now. I won yesterday. Okay, go right ahead. And I would like to go first. Can what music do sophisticated frogs like to listen to? Opera. Hop, hop, hop. Well, the sophisticated part throughout, I wouldn't say hip hop. Opera. I get it, opera. That's funnier. Funnier? Okay. Lauren, what's the difference between a Bigfoot and a Yeti? One's a little cooler. And someone asked me to choose my favorite plant, and there was three of them that I really liked in the room. Really put me in an orchid situation. Oh my gosh, are you okay over there? That is funny, awkward. Lauren's well, at the airport when all of a sudden I saw a guy fall unconscious onto the baggage carousel. He slowly came around. Yeah, that was good. And I was eating a midnight snack the other night, and I saw a yogurt floating across my kitchen. Might have been paranormal activia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you I got love me. That I had one. no idea where that one was going. A it's floating good. yogurt, like that is funny. So, congrats paranormal to me. activia. Oh, congratulations! You earned that one today. In respect yes. to jokes. There you go. Seven ten laugh off on B one hundred five. You know, five Breakfast Club, Ken and Lauren. We got your brain teaser question. Here we go. Um, 722, by the way. Uh, today going to be warm in the 80s. Okay. So yesterday's question, in case you missed it real quick, new survey says the average teenager tries this for the first time at 16, and it was coffee. Yep. All right. Today's question. Today's question. 10% of parents say they look back and regret this. What is it? We'll have to give a hint. I feel like these are becoming more trendy these days, like... Mm. I don't know. It's just like, yeah. Um, 10% of parents say they look back and regret this. It's kind of sad, too, because once you have this, you're stuck with this your entire right. life, you know? Yeah. And it's really something that uh, you put a lot of, well, sometimes you put a lot of thought into it. Other times people don't. Maybe you don't, and then that's why you regret this later on. 10% of parents say they look back and regret what? 727-B105. Call now, and you could win some Papa Murphy's Pizza. Mm-hmm. Right now on The Breakfast Club. Great for parents. Easy. <laughs> B105 Breakfast Club, Ken and Lauren. I got your brain teaser question, and today it has to do with uh, parenting. 10% of parents say they look back and regret this. Mm hmm. Mm. It's too bad. We give some clues here. Well, let's see what we got. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's go to the phone. Hi, B105. 10% of parents regret what? They're getting a tattoo. Uh, not getting a tattoo. Good guess, though. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Hi, Beautiful Five. What's your guess? Is it taking photos and videos of your kids? Um, they, they regret not taking enough or taking too many. Yes, not taking enough. Oh. <laughs> it's not the right answer either way. I was just curious if you, you know, what you were thinking. <laughs> good guess. Thank <laughs> you. <Thanks, Ken. laughs> I was just, I was just wondering. All right, yeah, have a good Called day. Called out. <laughs> you too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> ah, crap. Oh, crap. What is going on here? Things are working. Hi, what's your guess? Um, buying their kids a cell phone? No, not buying their kids a cell phone, but that's what I'm trying not to. I'm, I'm walking the line on that one right now, boy. Okay. Not that you care. I was just thinking all <laughs> You just all need out. someone to talk to about it. <laughs> thanks for listening. <laughs> okay, thanks for calling. <laughs> thanks. Yeah, I just, Hi, what's your guess? Uh, get a tattoo? Not getting a tattoo. Thank you. Thank you, though. Hi, what's your guess? 
Yes, it is a child's name. Oh, I'm the first one to get it? Yeah, yeah, you got it. You, you're, you're a winner. Oh, awesome. Yeah, what's your name? My name's Crystal. That's a nice name, Crystal. Uh, thanks. Yeah, you're okay with that one? I do like it. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Well, Too much that. work to change it, even if you didn't, you know? Right, yeah, right. It's, yeah. Uh, like, like... <laughs> okay, Crystal, congratulations. We got you some Poppy Murphy's. Hang on, okay? Awesome, thank you. There you go. You find there's a lot of Laurens that you're around your age group? Um, maybe, I guess. Like when my age group, there's a lot of Ashleys and Nicoles. Mm-hmm. And uh, Lauren seemed to be like around if you're in your third or your your thirties. Mm-hmm. Seems to be oh, that was a very popular name mm-hmm. back then. My name yeah. was supposed to be Alex, and then there was a last minute switch, so here I am. Alex, as in Alexandra, or yeah. Oh. Yeah. I have a lot of friends named like Allie or Alex or whatever, oh, okay. so it's fine. So anyways, yeah, that's a lot of work to change it. Just tell people, do what my mom did and change her name and say it's legal, but don't actually What's your change mom's it. name? She changed her middle name just, she told me just to the letter L, but I found out that was a lie. <laughs> really? Yeah. Maybe we can call her and call her out in a little bit. She'll never answer. I know. We can try. She never answers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there she you does go. love us, though, but... That's your brain teaser question this morning on B105. Lauren's Love Advice coming up, too. Just mm-hmm. a few minutes. Stick around for that. Any weather forecast coming up next. <laughs> B105 Breakfast Club. Ken and Lauren. Okay, Lauren's Love Advice. And we're talking... This is an interesting state that uh, Minnesota people find love, right? Yeah, like where you could find your soulmate because of compatibility. So this was done by datingadvice.com, which I'm going to bookmark that because that is very Lauren's Love Advice. But anyways... They surveyed 2,400 Americans about their preferences on a bunch of different topics. And they also asked, you know, what they look for in a partner, things like that. And then they made matches based on which states have the most similar preferences Mm -hmm. when it comes to choosing a partner. Like things we look for if somebody is like a family person, you know, or religious beliefs, things like that. And people's values. Exactly. So, any guesses what Minnesota's most compatible state, the state where you're most likely to find your soulmate based on compatibility, what it might be? Michigan? Not Michigan. I don't know. Is it a Midwest state? No. It's actually Hawaii. Really? Which is very weird because obviously they have island life. We have the opposite. We got a lot of water. We got a lot of lakes. They were surrounded by water. Yeah, we actually have a lot of similar, um, like, beliefs and preferences. You know why this all comes down to? We're the home of spam. They love spam in Hawaii. That, that, that's got to be it. That could be something. That's got to be like, it. I knew there was a reason I loved Hawaii 5 out. They're you just, know? they're this just. This is it. The, these these Hawaiian daters are just hoping we bring them spam. You That's really might have hit the nail it. on the head here. I got it. Other reasons, um, a good majority of Hawaiians and Minnesotans prefer a partner who likes a routine and who, you know, likes a very structured life. And then also um, when it came to spirituality, we had a lot of things in common. So Wisconsin, I'm not going to leave you out here. If you want to find your soulmate, the people you're most compatible with are Arizonans. From Wisconsin? Yeah. Oh, I'm still on the spam thing. Oh, okay. Look at that. Oh, okay. So Hawaii is the number one state consumer of spam followed by Alaska. Hmm. I thought maybe Minnesota would be up there, but yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. Sorry. All right. So anyways, Wisconsinites? Arizona, huh? Arizona. However, Arizonans prefer Oklahoma residents, but still, if you need to go on a little trip, Head to Arizona, and um, the study makes it clear, though, it doesn't really matter where you live, because you would think, okay, someone in Minnesota has nothing in common with someone from Hawaii, but it doesn't matter. No. Distance has nothing on love. Wow, Lauren. Laying it on thick today. (laughs) Lauren's love advice, huh? But isn't that interesting? It's it's something. Like Hawaii, that's the last, I mean, that's cool, but it's the last place I would have thought. You're in love with Hawaii. Um, what are the guys' names on Hawaii? Hawaii oh, Five O. Yeah, that show's um, over, right? It's been over for yeah, many years. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it's been over for like five years. They should remake it, though. It was what already else are made. They doing? It was already remade they once. They should do it a third time third, with the third. same people from the remake. Okay. So, anyways, there you go. Find its way to Paramount Plus Plus or something like that, or like it is on Paramount Plus. Yeah. 
745 on the Breakfast Club. Thank you, Lauren. Lauren's love advice. Morgan Wallen. Jordan Davis singles you up on B105. It is a Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. 752 and today going to be 82 and sunny. Holy mm-hmm. cow. What a nice day it's going to be. And of course, it's also September 11th. So we wanted to mention that there is going to be a remembrance ceremony actually not too far from now. It's going to be at Amsoil Arena in the lobby, um, 815. And it's going to be a brief remembrance ceremony put on by the city of Duluth. So um, if you're on your way to work or whatnot, you want to stop by. Um, there'll be city officials along with members of the police department, the fire department, the 148th fighter wing, and they'll um, talk a little bit. They will take a moment of reflection um, and just a short ceremony, like I said. Okay, so. 8.15 this morning? Yep. Okay, we'll make your way over there right now if you really, if you plan on going. Yep, and then after the ceremony um, with the fire department, um, you can actually participate in a memorial stair climb as well, so oh. that's open to the public, too. Okay, well, thank you for that information going on right now at Amsoil, or, well, very soon at mm-hmm. Amsoil Arena. All right, 7.53, B105. Shabuzi Barsong on B105. It's Northland's number one for new country. The Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. And uh, coming up, we're going to talk to Nicole from Animal Allies. Mm -hmm. We'll see what's happening there. And, uh, yeah, we'll look at your weather forecast, too. You know, if you you have, like, itchy eyes or whatever, not only do you have allergies, you've got some of this um, wildfire smoke that's been... I know, because I've had a cough. And, yes, I've been sick. But I'm like, this cough shouldn't be going on. It's because there's smoke outside. I don't know. You've had a cough since August. It's been like, yeah, I've been sick for like two months. But, I mean, now I'm better and I still have a cough. Okay, well, so. good luck with that. You would, would you like Thank a, you. Very sincere. You, I, I mean, I, I, I sincerely hope you you, you you continue to. But, I mean, there's a lot of things yeah. going on in the air and, mm-hmm. and whatnot, so. Yeah. Well, hang in there. Just I put my eye drops in because my eyes are burning. I thought you were just crying. Yeah, well, that could be, you know, depending on the day, that could be a pretty good, accurate guess, too. Just kidding. 757, no. <laughs> B105, your weather is next. B105, it's Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren, and Nicole from Animal Allies joins us every Wednesday from uh, the shelter to tell us what's happening, what's going on, and feature our pet pet of the week. How are things uh, going over there uh, this week? Good, good. You know, chug, chugging along still, you know, have lots of animals as always that are, are looking for homes, but um, things are going okay. <laughs> yeah, well, that's good. Uh, and, and we've got a featured pet this week and we haven't talked about a cat in a while, I don't think. And uh, this one is, oh, sweet Emma. Look she at that. She is looking very cute. Is she as cute as she looks? Yeah, she is really cute and super sweet. And we do tend to, you know, focus on the dogs a lot because they are kind of the harder animals to place, at least at Animal Allies currently. Most mm. of our cats come and go pretty quickly. Um, besides, you know, a few that tend to hang out for, for whatever reason. They're shy, um, not as, you know, personal in their kennel, whatever it may be. And sweet Emma, you know, she's 11 years old. She's a little bit older, um, but she's just so friendly. She loves lounging in the sun. She's in a kennel right by where she can get the sun coming in through the window. She's very mellow, really laid back. Um, I think she would enjoy just a nice, calm home. It would be an awesome snuggle buddy for someone. Um, she does seem to have a little bit of urinary tract issues going on, so we think transitioning her to a, a, a different diet and just kind of keeping an eye on that, getting her her regular vet visits um, would help tremendously. Um, but overall, there's, there's really not much negative you can say about her. She's just a sweetheart, a little bit older, and um, has been hanging out for a while. So she's ready to, to go snuggle up with you as, as the months start to get a little bit colder, although it hasn't happened yet. So knock on wood, maybe it'll stay away for a little bit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't really need the snuggling quite yet. But, uh, yeah. Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, winter will be coming and what a little snuggle uh, buddy there for you. Okay. A little shy That's first, right. but a lot of love to give. Oh, look at that. Yes. Emma. Absolutely. Uh, you check out, out Emma right now. I'm looking at uh, animalallies.net and uh, Adoptable Pets right there, and, and you can see that and everything else. And then we also have a uh, microchip clinic coming up soon. Yes. So there will be a free microchip clinic happening next Thursday at Animal Allies. I believe it's noon to 2, um, but don't quote me in case I'm wrong. It will be on our social medias and website, Facebook, Instagram, all those things um, uh, shortly. So you can confirm there. But, yes, it will be happening next Thursday at Animal Allies. Totally free. It's super quick. Um, so definitely worth coming on up if you've got a dog or a cat at home that needs a chip great time to get it done um, to make sure they're safe and can get home to as quickly as possible if something happens. 
How, is it how how painful is the chip for pets? I was always that's curious a good about question. That. I mean, is it is there it's, anything to it? Yeah, it's kind of it looks just like a shot. Some animals have, I would say, most animals have no reaction. Um, some will, will whimper a little bit. It's all about how kind of comfortable they are um, with the vet. But yeah, it's very very rare that an animal. <laughs> shows much of a reaction it's it's pretty quick um you know when we got all of those dogs in from that recent kind of hoarding case we had the 19 and i was helping with the exam so we were just going through all these puppies you know getting them all done getting their chips and i thought oh my gosh these little tiny puppies they're gonna get chipped with this big needle and not a single one of them had a reaction so <laughs> made me feel better well that's good Good to know. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that's uh, lots going on. That's uh, next Thursday. All right. And we'll check your uh, social media. We'll check your social media and Facebook page and all that stuff for more details as we get closer. Awesome. Sounds right. good. Okay. Well, uh, say hi to Emma for us. Hopefully, find uh, find her home. Yeah. Good news next week. Hopefully. Yes. Yeah, fingers crossed. I will do. All okay, right. Have a good one. We'll see you later, Nicole. You too. Bye bye. And Nicole from Animal Allies here on B105's 812 on the Breakfast Club. Chris Young, Young Love, and Saturday night on B105 at his Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. So this is ridiculous. Some people, uh, TikTok, you know, bringing up yeah. the drama here. Uh, Carnival Cruise <laughs> ship Uh-oh. Gray's uh, Glacier, actually not a glacier, it just grazed some ice in Alaska. Passengers then went to TikTok, compared it to a modern Titanic moment. I think that might be dramatic, but what I will say is that that would be very scary no matter what. Even yeah. if it was just a little ice, because okay. you don't know. Well, so here's the, here's what, this is filmed outside the window. I don't know, can you see that? I know that we have. Yeah. But you, okay, okay yeah, points. that's a very small chunk of ice compared to a cruise ship, but also, again, like. They say iceberg, most of it you don't see. It's all underneath the ice. Right, I would panic, so. Okay. Well, anyway, they bumped into it. And uh, they said several social media veered into far dramatics over the incident anyways. And one of them, Cassandra, said in a video she put on TikTok, if we die, it was damn well worth it. It's a Titanic moment. Okay. I don't know if that is the truth, but. Yeah. Well, they checked and there was no damage or anything and it was fine and, and they were fine. But uh, it was, it, it, you know, I guess, I guess I don't know how I would react if I. If our ship. Initially, panic. The good news is things have come a long way since the Titanic, so I would hope that we would be able to, you know, avoid a disaster like that. Well, hey, if we can save the Mission of Cotton. Oh, yes. We can save the Colonel that. Cruise. It's still over there, Doc, too. It's not. It's still not ready. I mean, things are old enough. Yeah. It already broke apart like a pop can once. You really want to go on that again? I don't know. I'm not a boat expert. but You kind of are. No, uh, vibe with Mike's boat expert. Okay. Well, I'm sorry that I missed him. Let's yeah, get him so back you, on. Yeah, we're, we're, we're back in here. Okay. We're talking about boats. Cool. And you know, we got an interesting boat we coming in. We can bring in. up this TikTok. Yeah, it's kind of funny. <laughs> anyway, well, there you go. Um, some jerk today. And Lauren, got a good story for us coming up. I do. Jelly Roll and Dustin Lynch, Chevrolet on B105. It is a breakfast club with Ken and Lauren. And some sh- sunshine and happiness on a summery day with Lauren and a, an uplifting story, I hope. At least I'm setting yes. it up for you. I mean, that's kind of the thing here. So our angels today... There's actually a few. So first and foremost, a group of high school students from Virginia, our first group of angels, they surprised their school's custodian with his dream car to show their appreciation for him. So they go to a high school called James Madison High School. They have a custodian that's been there forever. His name is Francis, and he's more than like a custodian to him. You know, they see him every day. He's a part of their lives. They love him. They're dear friends, and they know that he doesn't have transportation to get to work or nice transportation rather and so they secretly raised money for six months and then they went to a local car dealership and kind of worked out a deal with them to get him his dream jeep wrangler and yeah he said this is the best day of my life and i'll never forget it so they get a bunch of little rubber duckies too those little tiny duckies to put on it that's a jeep thing i Mm -hmm. guess yeah um, didn't they just have a story like this happen with another custodian somewhere? I swear. Yeah, this everybody like, just spoils their custodians as they should. That's cute. Well, I mean, they really are the the, the they, they make the buildings work. They make things happen, and mm-hmm. you know, it's one of those jobs behind the scenes, but very important and and really can touch lives too. You don't yep. have to just be, you know. Totally everybody. agree. Yeah, that's cool. You know, it's like at St. Jude Hospital, uh, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, they talk about how even, like, you know, custodians and everybody from doing, you know, 
all the different jobs and how they make such a difference in the patients' lives, too. So, right. you know, it's cool like this. And obviously in the school, they they love them. Mm-hmm. What a nice story. I thought so. What's your dream car? You want us all to pitch in for for you? Um, I'm not a car person, really. So um, just one that doesn't blow up. Well, you're doing pretty good then. Yeah, so that's all I can ask for. One that gets me safely to and from. I remember that Sunday afternoon, Lauren calls me. First words out of mouth are, are you drunk? Okay, it was like New Year's, so that's a valid question. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I need a ride. <laughs> I was like, okay, I got you. Bill and Scott and my girl on B105, the Northland's number one for New Country, the Breakfast Club with Ken and Lauren. And today going to be about uh, 82 or so, and sunshine, and nice uh, looking for the rest of the week here. So mm-hmm. get out and enjoy that. You know, good day to mow the lawn. Well, it might be a little hot to mow the lawn, but I got to get it done. Yeah, yeah, we have this talk like once a week about you trying to talk yourself into having to mow the lawn. Well, you know, it's just I I, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the problem isn't mowing the lawn. The problem is picking up everything to mow the lawn, you know. Right. And then I missed one of those, uh, like the other day I missed a golf ball that was in the yard. That was fun to hit with a mower, you know. Yeah. You got to be careful out there. I, I'm not allowed to mow the lawn, so. Why not? I just, it's, it's Aaron's job. He loves it. And he always makes jokes like it's your turn, but he loves it. It's his thing. So I'm not going to take that from him. Right. Well, you were looking at upper body strength. That would I know. Out. That would. would. Workout, I, I got to start know? working on that. Get one of those old school mowers that doesn't have a motor that you just push. It goes. We have three right now, but we don't need to get into that. Yeah. Well, you guys are turning into like a collection salvage yard over there with the vehicle. Yeah, we don't need to talk about it. Moving on. B105 Workday kickoffs next on the Breakfast Club. Toby Keith, God love her on B105, the Northland's number one for new country, and we will see you again tomorrow. We've got uh, Joe Danger coming in next. Listen while you work, and have a fantastic Wednesday. Have an amazing day. See you tomorrow. Another amazing day.